Hi everyone, my name's Chris and today I'll be doing a gear review for you uh, in this video and uh, well you can see already what I'm going to be reviewing. This is the Sabre Softshell Jacket by 511. Now, as you may notice, I'm a bit wet already, uh, no pun intended. Um, it is raining, it is a little bit chilly, it's not freezing cold, it's not hammering it down, but actually you may think, well, why am I outside then? I could be doing this review indoors in the house. But then, you know, this weather, this is perfect, absolutely ideal weather for reviewing a soft shell jacket just like this because, let's be honest, we get a lot of weather like this in Britain. Most of the year, it's going to be like this. It's going to be spitting with rain. It's going to be a bit chilly. The skies are going to be grey, generally crap. And that is why I think a jacket like this is worth a purchase for you. Obviously, there's a lot of European countries, bits from America, they're gonna have similar weather. It's not it's not awful, but it's it's not exactly California right now, it's not blazing sunshine. So here, here's where a sort of a medium level kind of jacket like this is gonna be excellent day-to-day -day wear, as well as um, things we're gonna go into later with regards to the actual sort of tactical usage of it or as we've been keeping with the rest of my channel if you're an airsoft player. Okay, so let's uh, start off with the basic construction of it. It's a triple layer microfiber shell. It's waterproof, it's breathable. It's gonna keep you dry in the rain, but unlike, say for example, a Gore-Tex jacket, they can get really sweaty inside, they can get proper minging. Um, it's gonna let a bit of that body moisture escape outside and, um, you know, you, you're still going to get hot in it, you're still going to sweat. But if any of you guys out there have worn jackets, like for example the British Issue Gore-Tex suit, uh, as any of you guys from the that will know, probably there's an American equivalent, I think the ECW CS. Um, that is literally just, it's just a layer of Gore-Tex, you know, thin, there's no, there's no clever technology about it. It's just, it's just that thin layer and it does keep all the sweat in, it keeps all the rain out brilliant but it keeps all that um, body moisture inside on your body and it's not pleasant so that breathability is very good to have. Right, pricing wise now I actually I've been waiting for one of these for quite a few years I have to say um, but I actually thought this is a Christmas present um, but it, if I hadn't I would have purchased it anyway it's available uh, you can get this on tacticalkit.co.uk I'll put a link down there in the description pick these up for it's about 130 pounds I believe they also do a version 2 which annoyed me slightly when I went on the website because you know, I just got this one they went years and then they come out with a version 2 but that's available for about 190 I think 180 somewhere in that region well having looked at the version 2 version 2 it comes in a sort of coyote tan like this it comes in black or in a for, sort of forest green foliage green but the zips are not color matched they're all black regardless of if you get coyote or the green version with, with this version one i'm not sure if there is a foliage one but they definitely do black and coyote and if you go with the coyote you get the coyote zips and it just it just looks a bit better really, rather than having lots of strips of black you know if you bought the coyote version then you want that color of jacket you don't want loads of black features on the jacket there's a couple on on this one on the version one but not too much and i think that's a, a bonus so let, let's talk about the waterproofing features because it's pretty it's a pretty good situation to be talking about the waterproofing features. Now, first off, the thing that strikes me is the zips. These are waterproof zips. Now let's get a close up on these. Right. And what you'll notice is they sort of look a backwards kind of inverted or inside out compared to a traditional zip that you would get on any other coat or jacket or whatever, the teeth on the inside and the backing has a layer of sort of, it's a thin sort of silicon plastic sort of material and it really meshes together there is you really do struggle to find the gap in the zip here when they're closed up I I tried for a couple of minutes when I first got this one I was first checking it over after to get out of the package and I did have a look over it and I was trying to find the actual spaces in the middle of the zips where I mean obviously it's got to open somehow it can't completely seal shut but you've really got to sort of fold it in half and dig your nail in 
to ever open the zip up. So these are going to stop water getting in, even in a pretty heavy downpour. Already. It would take a lot, lot heavier rain than this to ever get through that. I don't. I mean, we're talking torrential horizontal monsoon to ever get through these zips. So that's a plus. Zip pulls himself, standard metal pull, and everyone got this little string here. Cold weather gloves makes it a lot easier. Also on the zip features, um, you've got these little garages, I call them, little hoods, so when the zip is in its closed position, same on the sleeve pockets here, it's covered up, and because that is, you know, even with the waterproof zips, that actual, that area just there at the top of the zip pull itself, that's probably going to have the tiniest gap. So what you do is you close that up there, and that little gap is right up in there, in there, inside the little garage hood. Thing, and that's covered by the soft shell material. Quick go over the actual pocket layout itself. There's plenty on this, you're not going to be running out anytime soon. Start off, primary ones down here. These are, don't actually feature the waterproof zips on the main ones here, but what they have, as you can see, is just a layer of that soft shell material, just layers over the zip. And they've also got big bonus fleece, hand warmer. So when you're out there in the cold, just put your hands into there. Really nice fleecy material, it's really good quality. And yeah, that will warm your hands up for you. And again, even though the waterproof zips aren't feared, it's not a worry because you've got a nice layer of the soft material covering them up. As I showed you four chest pockets, not, not a bad little size, good for fitting small items, your phone, your wallet. Waterproof zips, garages. Waterproof zips on these, again, arm pockets, same waterproof zips, roughly similar sort of size to the chest pockets, easy to access, get your hands straight in there. On the inside, pockets wise, you've got one here, nice for storing, again, little items away, with it. that's got a zip on it, I've also got one here. main zip itself, yet again, waterproof, obviously it's the largest zip on the jacket so it's going to need it. It doesn't have the, the garage in the same way it does up here, but there is what I call a storm flap on the inside there that actually seals, covers up the zip on, on the inside, up on, in the neck area. This collar part is actually referred to as a storm collar, you can fold it down when it's slightly warmer, when it's not a bit, little bit nasty like this, put it up, keeps the wind off, keeps the rain off, all that good stuff. Same zipper pull again, oh, I mean actually you've got, um, as opposed to just a little bit of string, you've got a nice plastic tab on there, nice and easy to get, get a hold of to remove and put on the jacket in the cold with the gloves on, same stuff as before. Cuff areas, elasticated, around about half, the other half, you've got sort of a, a rubbery material here, velcro on that, velcro on the sleeve, just set that as tight or as loose as you want it to be, keep the wind out, keep the rain out. So far, it's been raining on me for a little while, beading up nicely, it's not getting through, I'm perfectly dry under here, so that's a thumbs up on that one. Let's have a look at the hood. Again, this uh, seems as we're looking at the rain repellent features of the jacket. Obviously, first and foremost, of course, the hood is removable. We've got press studs and the Velcro. It can be stowed away inside the storm collar. We've got this management tab on the back here, so you can cinch it down a little bit, depending on your head size. Peak on the front helps it keep the shape stop it dropping over your eyes so much uh, and uh, hindering your peripheral vision and obviously your vision up in that direction. Draw toggles, elastic shock cord on there with the uh, sort of cleats to keep it in whatever position you're going to adjust it into. The actual material itself, same waterproof properties as the jacket, you know, it's made of the same stuff. Really good quality stitching, really, really neatly done. Again, the same as the jacket. You know, you're not going to have any worries about this falling apart on you. I, 
my personal take 511 I would I tend to call them the sort of cry or I mean cry precision is probably the best uh, comparison but for the law enforcement world instead of the military they've only 511 they've only recently started in producing any items at all in camouflage patterns historically they've always just done your coyote browns and your blacks and your greens tan basic one solid block colors just aimed at the, the police market instead of the military one um, but the quality wise they rival any military gear manufacturer easily and if you do want a piece of equipment especially clothing in it and you're happy with a solid color they do have a few camouflage items out there you know, five of them not come trousers on at the moment but most of it at the moment is still just available in the solid patterns and if you want a solid color piece of gear i think they're really the way to go i think they're the sort of company where personally i don't have to worry when I'm going to make a purchase, when I'm considering buying a bit of the gear, I'm not having to look around for reviews with regards to the quality of it. I just go ahead, if I've got cash and I think it has the features that I want, I just buy it. And I've never had an issue with that so far. I've got a few bits of the stuff, never had any worries at all. Really impressed. So that's the pocket on the hood. It, as I mentioned, it's, it's fairly mild for December, but it's not warm out. The, the, uh, the atmosphere is descending on me slightly. My hands are cold because these are just Nomex gloves and they have no insulation whatsoever. But my torso, that bit that counts, that's where all your internal organs are. Feeling good. Um, the other soft shell jacket I do own, Tasmanian Tiger and Olive Drab, you've seen that in a few of my other videos. If you scroll back through a few of them, you see me wearing it. It's a bit of a less conventional design. But I've been wearing that as a day-to-day, -day, everyday jacket for well over a year now, coming up in two years, and the soft shell, particularly in this country, as I mentioned earlier, with the crappy weather, it's excellent. It's not a cheap jacket, but then there's a lot more expensive ones, you know, you've got your North Face and all the other sort of fashionable civilian brands. And honestly, I think to get the same quality with those sort of civilian brands as you would 511 you're going to have to fork over more cash perhaps I mean it depends on sort of what your style is what you like to wear but it, you, you know if you can get they don't look all that different it's, it may be aimed at the tactical whatever market the police and the military and all that but then so what you know, it pretty much looks like any other jacket no one's going to think is you're uh, pretending to be in the army just because you walk down the street in one of these that, that's not a problem so if you can get a jacket that I mean they usually they put more time and effort into the design of these sort of items as well and if you and the quality is just as good if not better because they know the strains and the rigors that their gear is going to be put through so they make it to a high high standard and quite often this stuff is cheaper than what you would get as an equivalent on the civilian market to get something as good you would have to spend more money so why do that really just get yourself something like this get yourself onto tactical kit again urls down in the description you can't go wrong with this anything 511 top of my stuff one pocket i did miss out actually it's these ones here um got one on either side sort of breast pockets they don't have a waterproof zip but they do have the soft shell covering over them got a bit of space in there now and they also have these now because they're aimed at the law enforcement market generally in america i'm led to believe i'm not sure i'm not an american policeman but i'm led to believe these are basically for mounting your id a badge or any sort of id you know if you're any other sort of security professional working in the close protection business anything like that you can mount your identification badge on there and it's easy to just hide it away when you don't want it on show but then you just flick that out there and there you go when you do want to uh, put that on display or you need to show it to anybody get past a checkpoint or whatever or uh, entering a building that sort of thing cut wise let's talk about the cut it is 
the, the main thing I notice is the uh, is down here at the bottom. It's quite short. You know, your average CV raincoat is going to go further down on your legs. As you see here, it stops. Just, you know, just there, it's literally just below my belt. The average most civilian coats I own that aren't aimed at any sort of law enforcement or military, they tend to hang down lower. You might say, well, then you're getting less for your money. Quite the opposite. But I find for day-to-day -day walking around, those civilian jackets, they're fine, but then as soon as you want to run or just move quickly anywhere whatsoever, they just get in your way. The cut on this, they've taken the time, they've looked at it, it doesn't get away, in the way, even of your, your leg movement at all. And that's very important. Um, if, if this is aimed at police, guys, they're going to be going to be patrolling and then obviously they're going to they're going to spot something going wrong someone's just mugged some some poor old lady they're going to have to start legging it after the after the suspect you don't want your jacket getting in the way of you running or you're trying to hurdle fences wherever it might be and that's good the rest of it again it's a good it's a good close fit around all around your abs, your chest, your upper arm areas, and the lower arms, just everywhere really. It's without being massively baggy, but still comfortable. It's, you know, it's not bloody it's, um, giving you a corset effect. You've got enough enough free material to move. Uh, you know, no more than necessary, no less. Insulation wise, we've talked about the rain, let's talk about temperatures. Like I mentioned before, my hands are a bit cold, but torso is feeling pretty warm. And if you look on the inside here, what you notice is this, this fabric on the inside that they've added in. It's basically an insulating layer. I'm not exactly sure what material they've had it out with, but it's doing its job. Seeing as I can see my breath, I'm, I would guess it's probably, it, it can't be, it definitely can't be any more than 10 degrees C old than the floor. Um, so it's not freezing cold, but again, if this isn't an extreme weather jacket. If, if the temperature, is, if, you know, if that mercury is really, really dropping low, this isn't for those times. But then it doesn't do that so often. Generally, particularly in this country, it's just a bit chilly and kind of rainy. It's not a torrential freezing monsoon. It's just 90% of the time outside of that one week that we call last summer, 90% of that time, it's just this sort of overcast, rubbishy weather. That's why this jacket makes an investment because a good investment because you'll just find yourself reaching for it off that coat hook. You'll have your different jacket and you'll just reach for this just again and again and again the longer you have it. And eventually you'll just probably end up not really wearing anything else a lot of the time. And your money really does pay off because you'll get years of everyday use out of this jacket. Every single day you put it on, you'll go to work, you'll maybe wear it at work. You can take it to airsoft games if you're airsoft, in. and uh, it's not it's not going to wear out on you anytime soon, and it'll serve you well. So that was that. That's the 511 Sabre. Good waterproofing properties. Going to keep you warm. Plenty of pockets. Well cut. Well designed. Solid construction. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. See you next time.